on Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. Today we're on the Axe FX3 and we're talking about tidying up high gain rock and metal tones. All of these tips and tricks will apply to your FM3 as well. So if you're an Axe FX3 user or an FM3 user, get your unit out and let's play along. I'm using my PRS Custom 24 today. It's in drop D. Feel free to choose your favorite guitar and use all of these tips and tricks as starting points. I've got the Angle Severe 2 amp model dialed up at the moment. I did a video over on my YouTube channel on the weekend dialing in this amp. So if you want some specific tips and tricks for this amp model, I'll put a link in the video description so you can check that one out. Let's just have a listen to where it is at at the moment. <laughs> So for my money, that's already a pretty good high gain sound. I'm really enjoying the way that's sounding in the room. The first thing I want to talk about is mostly the feel of what's going on and getting a speaker impedance curve that gives you the right feel under your fingers. The guitar is a really tactile instrument. We not only have to listen to it, we have to actually play it and getting the feel right to me is really important. And the biggest feel parameter is when we go to the speaker tab in Axe Edit and we play around with these speaker impedance curves. So you can try and match this up with an authentic choice to say match your cabinet IR. And you know, we've got the amp model, we've got the cab block. The speaker impedance curve is basically what a real amp sees when it's plugged into a cabinet and that is gonna change the response of the amp. So it's kind of the, the third factor that kind of ties everything together from your amp model and your cab block. Let's have a listen to say the 4x12 recto straight impedance curve. This is going to sound different. It's going to feel massively different under my fingers because of the lower low frequency resonance frequency here. Let's check it out. <laughs> So that one is amazing for those big open chords. It kind of gets a little woolly and woofy on the palm mutes. Probably my favorite impedance curve is this 4x12 5153. Higher low resonant frequency and kind of a much tighter Q on everything there. You can see this uh, resonance Q. Uh, the thing that I like about the current firmware on the Axe FX3 and FM3 is we don't have to go and tweak all these parameters. We can just scroll through the different impedance curves. So like I said, this is my favorite one. This is the one I would choose, but I'll show you a couple of different options as well. <laughs> That one's amazing in the room as well, but you could also play around with impedance curves from stuff like the 1x8 Champlifier. Let's have a listen to what it sounds. <laughs> That one's kind of weird. It doesn't feel anywhere near as good as the other impedance curves from the 4x12s for this style of music, but I don't think it sounds bad and you might really like the feel as well. So I would encourage you to really dive into this parameter and figure out what impedance curve you really like. If you're playing through a real cabinet as well, these can be a great starting point. Say you're using uh, a boogie oversized recto cabinet, then it would make sense to start with this recto straight impedance curve right here. But I'm going to roll with the 5153. That's my favorite one. The next thing is a classic metal guitar trick for sort of more modern sounds where you take an overdrive pedal, you turn the gain all the way down, the level all the way up, and you basically use it as a preamp boost, a bit of pre-EQ. And we can actually do that either with a drive block or with the preamp tab in the amp block. So this input boost type and there's stuff like Tube Screamers. So I can kick this in and control the amount of boost that I want. This one is super addictive because you get more gain, you get this kind of like mid-range boost 
a little bit more compressed, smooths out the high end, tightens up the low end. It's good stuff. <laughs> That one's amazing. If you're using a really bassy amp, like say a Recto, I would suggest the Grinder Boost. And to really crank up the boost level, go back to the amp block and maybe turn down the input drive or the overdrive. If you're using really low tune guitars or you're using eight strings or extended range guitars, uh, this is the boost type for you. I'm in drop D, so it might sound a little bit kind of uh, clangy, but uh, whatever. <laughs> My personal favorite is the CC boost though, uh, which sounds like this. I would probably lower the boost level just back to 12. <laughs> I like that one because it kind of combines the things I like about the Tube Screamer, but it's got a little bit more kind of hair for a little bit of an 80s thing, which I always enjoy. If you don't want the boost though, you can use the input EQ in the amp block or under the ideal settings in here, you can use the cut switch. I believe from memory, the cut switch is a high pass filter at 120 Hertz. It's a really great way to just kind of tighten up your amp tone. <laughs> So that's pretty awesome. Or alternatively, you can go to the input EQ and just increase this low cut parameter. Let's try 250. Let's go a little bit more extreme. <laughs> Similarly, you could play around with the high cut just to kind of smooth out the high end as well. But for me, I normally like to bring the low cut up somewhere around 200, 250 hertz as a starting point. Again, tweak it to taste. If you've got a lower tuned guitar, you might want to increase this particular parameter. So that kind of finishes my favorite tricks in the amp block. I think my all time favorite tweak though is using a multiband compressor as a dynamic EQ. So let's say we want a little bit more kind of low end in here. I'm gonna turn the bass up a little bit so that it's, you know, you get the low end you want, you got that feel you like, but it gets a little bit kind of woofy when you really dig in. <laughs> So you can do this. I'm just going to kind of bring up the settings I used. Uh, a lot of people would know this as the Andy Sneep Waves C4 trick. So I just have it saved in my blocks library as tight multiband compressor. But what we do is we take the low and the high bands and we just set the level to zero. We turn the threshold up to zero and we turn the ratios down. I should probably turn this one down to one. It's not doing anything anyway. And we'll set the crossovers at around 90 hertz and 350 hertz to start with. The attack is going to be about 12 and a half milliseconds and double that for the release. You can play around with these values. Don't be afraid to go you know, down around 10 or up to around 20 with the attack. Again, depending on what you like feel-wise. Uh, otherwise, I've just set the ratio at 2.3 and the important control is the threshold control. So what we want is when we play nice and open for this threshold control, basically 
you know, it's not activated, nothing's happening, it's all good. When we dig in and we palm mute, we are creating this kind of big peak between these frequencies of 90 and 350 hertz. And that is gonna cross the threshold. This multiband compressor is then gonna say, hey, that, that kind of buildup of low end, that low end mud, if you like, I'm gonna squish that down. And the ratio is gonna determine, you know, the ratio at which it does the squish. So my test is this, just take a riff, and you know play it into the looper and what we're going to do is just slowly turn the threshold up until the open chords don't activate the multiband and the chugs do so let's play this riff and then do just that <laughs> Okay, so you can see a range of values there. If you overcook this, it totally takes all the lovely chunky qualities of your tone away. If you don't have it, you really start to notice that low end build up there. So uh, again, there's no kind of magic setting for this. You have to sit there and tweak the threshold control depending on the type of amp you're using, depending on the master volume setting and the overall level of what's coming out. This is a dynamic control. So rather than just cutting between 90 and 350 hertz and really just taking out that you know lovely chunk all the time we're only doing it when we're doing the palm mute so i love this as a dynamic trick uh, that you know kind of doesn't change the feel when you're playing open you do the chugs it's just reining them in a little bit and leaving space for the other instruments in a mix uh, so you get this <laughs> which I really, really like. And, you know, if you're listening at low volumes, you're gonna be like, oh, it's kind of taken away that low end thing that I like. But when you're playing at concert volumes, this is absolutely gonna save your neck in a mix. This kind of trick works great on bass guitar as well. Or, you know, if you set the uh, crossovers much higher around the three to 4K zone, you can take out a lot of say pick attack on distorted bass if you're doing something like that. So they're my main tricks for taking a high gain sound that you already really like and sculpting it into something which is mix ready, whether you're playing live or whether you're recording your guitars and multi-tracking them. Uh, there's a few nifty little tricks there. Let me know in the comments though, what are your favorite tricks in the Axe FX3 and the FM3 for getting your favorite high gain sound? Uh, there's a bunch that I didn't cover here, like say using the uh, precision drive model. Uh, on the Axe FX3, which isn't on the FM3 just yet, as I understand it. Uh, it was stated on the forum that they're gonna be porting those drives over for all the FM3 users, which is really exciting. So stuff like the precision drive, I'm sure a lot of people have their favorite kind of little tricks with compressors and EQs. Post them in the comments and share them with everybody else because sharing is caring. And uh, that's what we're all here to do. Thanks so much for watching the video. I'll see you all next time.